In this episode, I'm answering your most pressing marketing questions. We're talking about the difference between Facebook and Instagram reach. We're talking all about sending personalized video conversations and the differences between digital marketing and traditional marketing and a whole lot more. Hey there, my name is Adam Earhart, modern marketing strategist, and you're watching a Q&A edition of the Modern Marketing Show. So if you're interested in learning the latest and greatest marketing strategies, tools, tips, tricks, and tactics, well, you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. All right, so let's dive right into the Q&A. So our first question comes courtesy of Rhonda, who asks, so are all types of marketers basically digital marketers since technology is essential in today's business marketing world? Good question, Rhonda. Basically, what we're trying to figure out here is all marketing, digital marketing. And the answer is no. Uh, but here's a little more specifics and why this is going to matter. For starters, marketing is really the kind of the strategy and the fundamentals and the principles of communicating your business's value to your target market. That's all marketing is, right? But digital marketing is using that strategy, but with digital tools. Just like traditional marketing is gonna be using the same kind of strategy of trying to connect with your target market, trying to give them a compelling reason and message in order to do business with you, but using traditional tools like newspaper, radio, magazine, magazines, direct mail, things like that. So yes, technology is becoming more important and digital marketing or online marketing or whatever you want to call it has been moved kind of to the forefront of our minds and this is what people are basically talking about today. But that's almost a shame because what it's leading to is a lot of really shallow conversations, a lot of kind of superficial marketing done on social media and, and really fluffy kind of... Um, Con like no real meat to the content on different platforms and that, where in reality, what we should be doing is we should be talking about marketing strategy first. Always marketing strategy. Who's the target market that we're trying to reach? What's the message that we need to use to communicate the value to them? Uh, and then where are we going to be communicating this value? Is it gonna be digital media, like social media and email marketing and online ads and things like that? Or maybe it's still gonna be some traditional marketing like newspaper or radio or magazines or whatnot. So. There is a bit of a difference here. The takeaway point is that you wanna make sure that you're always focusing on strategy first, tactics second. Tactics being obviously the digital platforms and things like that. All right, so our next question comes courtesy of Nepali. I've been boosting the same image ads on both platforms with the same targeted group, but I get 10 times more engagement with Facebook. It's not just one time, I did it hundreds of times. How can you explain that? So this question is in response to a Facebook ads and an Instagram ads type of thing. And basically, why are we getting so much better results on Facebook than we are with Instagram? And maybe you've seen this as well. If you've put them out over different networks and you're testing something on Facebook and you're testing something on Instagram, and one of them just seems to click, right? It just resonates and it skyrockets and the other falls flat or just totally bombs. Why is this happening? Well. Couple of very good explanations here. The first of which is that your market may not be on one or the other platform. So if you're getting great results with Facebook, but Instagram's bombing, or maybe you're trying the same thing on YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever, and it's just not resonating, it could simply be because your market really isn't as active or present on those other platforms or you haven't managed to accurately target them on those other platforms when everything is lining up over here with this platform. The other thing is that it could be that the way you have your offer or your message all wrapped up and delivered, well, it could just be way more congruent and looks like it actually belongs on this platform when it seems kind of out of place or just isn't fitting in with these platforms, which is why nobody is really reacting with it. So it's going to be a combination probably of both. Basically, the ability to target your ideal target market on one or whatever platform you're going for, and then also making sure that the message, the content, the posting, whatever it is that you're putting out there looks like it actually belongs and is optimized for the platform. A good example of this, and we see this all the time, is when somebody is going through and creating a Facebook ad and they just click all placements, but they don't think to go in there and properly optimize the ad for each specific placement. Like, how's it gonna look on a desktop? How's it gonna look on a mobile news feed? How's it gonna look if you're using vertical video or landscape video? How's it gonna look if you click Instagram and make that a placement? Obviously, we're gonna have completely different user experiences here, so we've gotta be cognizant of that and make sure that we're getting everything specifically designed for each platform. So long story short, why are you getting better results? Well, any one of those reasons. But here's the takeaway. 
it doesn't really matter and I'm less concerned with why you're getting better results on one and more excited that you are getting good results on one. So what you wanna do here is really double down on the one that's working and just kinda of leave the other one alone for now. Focus on what's working, put all your energy and effort there and we can come back to this one later once that one is totally optimized. All right, so our next question comes to us courtesy of Sherry, and it's a bit of a long one, so I'm not gonna read it all, but basically what Sherry's asking here is that she doesn't know how to resonate and to communicate and talk with her local clients that she has nothing in common with because she was raised in a different part of the country. So what can I say in my advertising that would interest locals? I don't know how to talk to them. Okay, this is awesome. So first of all, good for you for understanding that you may not be your target market, but you don't have to be your target market in order to communicate with them. That said, you do need to get into their shoes, and this means market research. I know, this is such a boring answer, but the reality is, is if you wanna communicate with the locals and with the local market and someone that you're just having a hard time kind of resonating with, you gotta do a little bit of digging in. All right, so what does that mean? Well. Probably the easiest place to start is just by having conversations with your clients, starting to learn about things that they like, uh, things that they read, food that they eat, cultural events that they like to attend to, kind of all the basic marketing stuff. Also, you want to form a really clear customer avatar. This is kind of like that fictional representation of your ideal client. So list out all of their demographic details, things like their age, their gender, their income, their occupation, title, anything that goes into that kind of category. Then their geographic details, so where they live, what, obviously we're talking about local, so what city, what neighborhood, what streets, what areas. Uh, if we're talking about national or international, we'd talk about what countries and things like that. From there, you want to drill down to the psychographic details, and this is where we get really granular. So we want to look at things like, what are their attitudes? What are their interests? What are the groups that they belong to? The affiliations, organizations, uh, what kind of books do they read? What movies do they watch? What restaurants do they visit? All of these things you want to be out there consuming as much as possible. Now, you don't need to change your personality. You don't need to become someone that you're not, but you do need to understand the words that they use, the jargon, the slang, the insider lingo, and you've got to start to try to adopt more of that if you want to communicate effectively with them. Now, if you've done all that and you still have no idea what to do, well, competitor research is a pretty decent place to start as well. Simply take a look at what your competitors in the space are doing, specifically if they're marketing to the same kind of clients that you wanna get, and take a look at what kind of words they're using, what kind of images, what kind of tone, what style, all of that you can learn a ton from, which will do nothing but good things to help you resonate and connect with people who you otherwise may not have much in common with, at least not yet. All right, our next question comes to us courtesy of Cody with the one hour funnel. Adam, curious how the generous tips provided here include one-to-one -one video messages with something like Bonjoro, Facebook Messenger, BombBomb, etc. Any tips for those types of short videos? All right, so what Cody's basically asking here is how can we use video marketing in a more personalized one-to-one -one type of sense with all of these platforms that he listed there, all of which allow you to send customized, personalized video messages to your market in kind of a much more condensed format here than, um, than something like we're doing here, which is gonna be a little bit longer and obviously not specifically just to one exact person at the time. So totally great question, Cody. And the answer here is that many of the concepts of proper video marketing are still gonna apply, right? Like we're still gonna wanna have decent lighting. So we're not filming it from uh, like a dark garage or a closet or whatnot. We're gonna wanna make sure that we have good audio so that they can hear us and uh, obviously understand what we're saying otherwise what's the point we also want to make sure that the video is engaging and compelling and it keeps them interested and allows them to sort of consume the content but that's basically where things stop and then we get to do something that's super cool that we don't normally get to do which is really customize the delivery of the video and really form that connection by using their name, by making sure that the content of our video is gonna be relevant and meaningful, uh, and by building that kind of trust and communication and level of, um, of intimacy that you can't get outside of essentially an in-person communication or a video. You see, I absolutely love using one-on-one -on -one video style communication through email or through messenger, uh, or even voice style through 
email or through Messenger, just because it gives you that one extra bit of edge when it comes to putting in that little bit of extra effort and really showing that you care. Now, does it take more effort to make a video type email and an audio type email than it does to just type something out real quick? Of course it does, right? But that's the point. In fact, by showing that you're willing to put in the effort and personalize it and make something specific for someone, you'd be amazed at just how much goodwill and trust and connection it really helps to build. All right, our next question comes to us from Noha who asks, hey Adam, someone got into my ad account and created a campaign with seven ad sets. It was advertising for a sports brand, then my account got deactivated. I sent messages to Facebook that this new campaign isn't mine, but they still insisted. My question is, how did my account get accessible? What do I do next? So Noha is basically asking here, account got, sounds like hijacked and then wiped out and was unable to get back in. All right, so this is a very familiar question. I made a video a while back on uh, Facebook ad account getting shut down and deleted and all that. So if you haven't checked it out, probably a good one to go look at. But this has been happening a lot lately. And, and by lately, I mean over the last year, two, even three, we started to notice a trend of more ads getting denied, more ad accounts getting deleted, and more business managers even, which is kind of the level above that, getting just outright banned. So a couple things you can do here. For starters, if this happens to you, there are some steps you can take, but they're pretty limited. Obviously, you can file like a support ticket or try to get in touch with Facebook, but you're going to be at their mercy, which means you could be waiting days, weeks, months. Maybe you'll get no response at all. Now, you can go and try to create a new profile and a new ad account, kind of against the terms of service to do this, but again, if you're in a desperate situation, you've got to find a way back in. That's one thing to do. Other thing is definitely start looking at other ad platforms as well. For example, we're moving a ton of our ad clients off Facebook, or at least leaving them on Facebook in some capacity, but testing out YouTube ads and things like that, because it gives us another network, and right now YouTube ads tend to be a little more relaxed than do Facebook ads in regards to the terms of service, but that could of course change later. All right, so with all that said, by far the best way to avoid having this happen is to just essentially take preventative cautionary measures ahead of time and making sure that you really understand and study the Facebook terms of service, which is gonna keep your account safe by avoiding making claims that you're not allowed to make or advertising products you're not allowed to advertise or things like that. Also, really make sure that your account stays secure so it doesn't get hijacked. You can set up two-factor uh, verification. You can obviously make sure you've got long, complicated passwords that nobody else knows. All of the usual kind of cybersecurity type things you want to make sure you're using, especially if Facebook ads form a significant part of your business, right? You can't really afford to take those kind of risks and have your account get shut down. All right, and our next question comes to us from Lorena who asks, Adam Earhart, do you recommend running a Facebook and Instagram ad at the same time for a $5 daily budget? All right, so here we're talking about what I call micro budgets. So budgets that are really small where we just wanna maybe test some things out and we wanna make sure that we're gonna sort of get results before we scale them up, which by the way, I'm all for. I'm, I'm not against small budgets by any means, uh, especially because there's no sense in spending hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands a day if you don't know it's gonna work. That's basically gambling. That said, when we're operating with these smaller budgets, these micro budgets, there's a couple problems that come into play. For starters, we're simply not giving Facebook enough data or getting ourselves enough data back to make educated decisions. After all, if we're paying like a buck or two bucks a click for uh, an ad that we're trying to send somewhere, well, at five bucks a day, we're gonna get like five clicks, two clicks, three clicks a day, hardly enough numbers to figure out like, all right, this ad is better and this landing page is converting and, and this is working for me. So it becomes really challenging. Also, we have to make sure that whatever objective that we're asking for with Facebook, so whether we're going for traffic or video views or conversions, well, we've got to make sure that we're giving Facebook enough data with that budget to get back, again, relevant information. For example, let's say that you're advertising a lead magnet and you're expecting to collect leads at five bucks a day. Well, with a $5 a day budget, you're going to get one lead a day. That's pretty light, especially when Facebook likes to see around three to five objection sort of conversions per day. Meaning, if you're anticipating or estimating like a $5 lead magnet download, you wanna make sure your budget is somewhere between $15 and $25 a day, so you're gonna get those three to five conversions. So, step one is obviously let's take a look at the right objective for that, and then maybe we'll kind of dial it down a bit, and maybe we'll just go for traffic. So then we can optimize for link clicks, because maybe we'll get those at 
at a buck or two bucks or maybe even less per day. Barring that, if we can't even get that, we could even step it down less and go for something like video views or engagement, which again, we're gonna be able to get a lot more data back and start to see what kind of works. All right, so to answer your question specifically, should we be using all of these different placements with just $5 a day? Should we use Facebook and Instagram and maybe Messenger and in-feed stuff and all, all of the complicated and various kind of targeting placements that you've got available? Or should you laser in and just pick one? Well, the answer to this question is it depends on how much data you have and how well you know your market, the media, and the message that you're using and how well this is gonna work. For example, let's say that you've got a campaign that you know just absolutely crushed it with women between the ages of 35 and 45 using Instagram feed ads. Well, in this case, my advice is five bucks a day running Instagram feed ads to this target market is gonna be perfect. But if you're running a brand new offer, you have no idea who it's gonna resonate with. Maybe it's gonna be um, younger women or older men or somewhere in the middle or any combination. You don't know if it's gonna be on Instagram or on Facebook or no idea, right? Totally cold. Well, in this case, you wanna give more power back to Facebook. So select all placements, let Facebook do what it needs to do to optimize, to find out where you're gonna get the best results. And then after a sufficient period of time, say 72 hours or so, well then it's time to look back through all the data you've collected and you can then start to make more educated guesses on which placements are gonna be best, which ad copy, which images, and so on. All right, so if you have a question that you'd like answered, make sure to leave them in the comment section of the YouTube video. Make sure to tag me on Twitter, which is probably gonna be the best place moving forward to reach and make sure that you get your question answered. Make sure to keep it as clear and concise as possible, and hopefully we'll be able to answer it on an upcoming episode of this question and answer period. All right, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time on The Modern Marketing Show.